Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another beautiful fall Sabbath day. What an amazing morning it was coming along the lake. All the colors are out like twice as much as they were last Sabbath. And the mist was on the lake. And just a beautiful, gorgeous day to worship our Creator, isn't it? We're going to be singing. This first song is from our hymnal. It's Jesus Paid It All. And the, the lyrics will be on the screen for you as well. I believe it's number 184. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spot. try a new song this Sabbath. We've been, oh, that's not song number two, that's song number three. My okay, we'll do this God. one first, good. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this one? All right. Yes, this is the new song. We've been practicing it this week. media team. A beautiful song, and so just bear with us as we uh, introduce this to you. Some of you may know it, and a very fitting song for today as well. Uh, being we're having the communion Sabbath, our Lord's Supper celebration, and celebrating what God did for us on the cross. <clears throat> the song is called My Savior, My God. I am not 
not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and deed. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of Him to be my Savior. My Savior. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I tip that He would leave His place on high and come for sinful men to die. You count it strange, so once did I. Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me, my God He was, my God He is, my God He's always gonna be, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me, my God He was, my God He is, my God He's always gonna be. Yes, living, dying, let me bring my strength, my solace from this spring. That he who lives to be my king once died to be my savior. That he would leave his place on high. Sinful man to die. You counted strength, so once did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior lives, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives. My Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God is always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior loves, my Savior lives. We always talk about what God did on the cross, and sometimes it's easy to forget that. In just three days, he rose again. We're going to have our opening song now, number, and it's uh, another song, not in a hymnal. You are my king, amazing love. <clears throat> and if you want to stand with us, you can feel free to do that if that's how you feel. <clears throat> As we celebrate our risen Savior. Thank you, Jesus. And what was it all about? joy to honor 
Father, today we're just so thankful for your sacrifice of your son that came and paid the debt on the cross so that each and every one of us have that chance at eternal life and forgiveness of sins and a renewed experience with you. And I just pray today that this service today is a blessing to those here and also watching online and be with our pastor as he brings us your word here. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen. Welcome to the first Sabbath in October. As, uh, rejoice in the beautiful colors of the fall. Perhaps not looking forward to what's coming, but uh, it's coming with a splash, isn't it? Today is Communion Sabbath. Today we celebrate as believers our twofold commonality. A commonality, a communion among ourselves, according to Galatians 3.28, which says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And our other commonality is with Christ himself, isn't it? Because Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So calling this event communion comes from a single verse in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And uh, on page 1318 in the Bible that's in front of you in the pew there, uh, page 1318 is 1 Corinthians 10:16. 1 Corinthians 10:16. Paul says, "The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, 
is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And it is obvious that the early Christians, the first Christians, were um, taking a cup and blessing it. They were taking bread and breaking it. And it was a special occasion. And so the question uh, comes, where did they get that idea from? The cup of blessing and the bread which we break came from the new meaning that Jesus attached to a couple of the elements of the Passover meal Jesus ate with his disciples just prior to his crucifixion. What started out as a simple, just a plain, ordinary Passover meal turned into what we call today the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper or simply communion. And you know what? As recorded in all four Gospels, it's very significant. So this is what happened. I'm going to just cover it briefly in case people are not familiar with it. Uh, John records in chapter 13 and verses 4 and 5, that's on page 1240, page 1240, John 13, 4 to 5, that Jesus rose from supper, that was the Passover meal, laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Why did he do that? Well, he wanted to wash jealousy, resentment, pride, and that kind of stuff from their hearts. They were all arguing who was going to be first in the kingdom. They did not have communion among themselves, and they certainly were not prepared to have communion with Christ. Matthew states on page 1145 to 1146, Matthew 26, 26 to 28 states, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Quite a, quite a change, quite a twist. The Passover has actually formed the basis for the communion service. And when we go back, to, when we think about Passover, we go right back to Abram. Our story begins when God called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. And you know, back in, on page 12, which is actually uh, Genesis chapter 12, the story begins. Abraham is called out of Ur of the Chaldees, and God sends him to a land he doesn't know anything about. It's actually the land where the Canaanites dwell, the land of Canaan. And uh, he promises him to, be a, to make of him a great nation. And he would bless him, and he would be a blessing to everyone. Um, but first, his descendants were going to go down in Egypt, and they would spend 400 years in Egypt. Well, at the end of 400 years, actually 430 years, the time had come when their sojourn was to end, and God remembered his promise to Abraham and set about to set them free, and he used two men, two brothers, Moses and Aaron. He sent them to Pharaoh, to set his people free. But um, <laughs> the book of Exodus tells that story, beginning on page 60. But Pharaoh was not cooperative. Even after nine natural disasters, nine devastating plagues, even after the land was totally destroyed, he would not budge. So, plague 10 the death of the firstborn would at last break Pharaoh's resolve, at least long enough to allow the Hebrews to escape. We pick up the story in chapter 12, page 72 in our Bibles, and uh, 
So to escape the death angel, the Hebrews were told that they should put blood on the doorposts and the lintels of their doors of their home. So around the door of their home, they would put sprinkle this blood. The blood was from the death of a lamb or goat, and uh, they needed to roast it and eat it, and anything left was to be burnt. The blood was a sign that the destroying angel, so he would pass over that house, and that's how, where the name Passover comes from. The angel passed over the house without doing any damage to any of the firstborn in that house. So the life of the animal was substituted for the life of the firstborn. In those houses without blood, the firstborn child, the firstborn of the animals, was slain at midnight. So we've got a couple of boys here. One of them is firstborn. And uh, without, that, without that animal, without killing that animal, then you would be slain that, that night. So, and God instructed his people then to commemorate that night when the death angel passed over by eating that kind of a meal annually. So the Passover was originally eaten at home at the beginning of Abib 14. That was in the evening because in the Bible, since creation, evening always comes before, darkness comes before light. And evening begins the day. So at sunset, the day began. And at sunset, around sunset, they were to eat the Passover meal. But over time, that custom kind of changed. First of all, um, <clears throat> they, they got off into paganism and, and they, they left... Uh, um, the God of their, uh, that delivered them, um, King Hezekiah and uh, King Josiah actually brought back the Passover to the people, but they brought it to the temple. And I suppose they did that for a couple of reasons. Once they wanted, one, they wanted to ensure that everybody kept the Passover, and secondly, they wanted to keep out all the Baalism that might be mixed up with the keeping of the Passover in the people's homes. And secondly, during the Babylonian exile, uh, these two events were combined. Actually, the Passover was to be preceded by a seven-day feast of unleavened bread. And during the Babyl Babylonian exile, those were combined. And so the Passover began the feast of unleavened bread. At the end of the day, at the start of the 15th day, they did the Passover. And so there was a kind of a mixture of the two Passovers going on. At the time of Christ, uh, apparently there were both Passovers being observed, the one in the people's homes and the one in the temple. Uh, <clears throat> one led by the priests, at the end of the day, and one in the homes at the beginning of the day. Uh, <clears throat> as the gospel shows, Jesus, his disciples, Jesus told his disciples to prepare a room. So this room was in a private home, not in the temple. Uh, <clears throat> so he observed the Passover before the priest did at the temple. Jesus kept it at the beginning and the priest kept it at the end. And this makes sense of the, of the stories because when you read the accounts in the Bible, it's a little confusing. So Jesus was, ate the Passover meal with his disciples. Then he went out into the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed earnestly three times that the cup passed from him. Then he was taken into uh, to Caiaphas and to Pilate and back and forth and you know how that scene went and of course he was crucified and at the exact moment of his death as from the cross he cried with a loud voice it is finished 
the curtain separating the holy from the most holy place in the temple ripped from top to bottom and the Passover lamb waiting to have its throat slit by the priest in the temple escaped. The Passover event commemorating the time when the animal's life took the place of the human life was now superseded by an event where the life of the Son of God took the place of the lives of every human being. And that's why Jesus put a twist into the Passover. After the Passover meal had been eaten, he washed the disciples' feet, and taking the leftover bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it for all to eat. For this was his body. This was to be broken, that body that was to be broken for our salvation. He then took the cup and blessed it, telling his disciples to drink it, for it was the New Testament in his blood. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life everlasting, not just the life for here and now. What love, what matchless love, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Reconciled to God, we were his enemies, while we were his enemies. Amazing love. How can it be that God, my God, should die for me? So we're going to begin our communion service today by washing one another's feet. Remembering as we do so that we are illustrating the higher cleansing, the washing away of sin, of alienation between ourselves and our maker. God alone can do that. The men will serve each other at the back of the sanctuary, the women in the room at the end of the foyer to the right. Understand we have a special song at this time before we separate to uh, do this, participate in that service of humility. It's my 
mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. Join Nelson Adventist Media on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook for good sermons, praise time, prep talk, testimonies, health segments, and more.